Hey guys, Metalux Beats here. Now over a year ago, I did a Klonoa Iceberg video, which I will admit, I did not expect it to have this much views as it did. I'm not sure if it's because of the subject matter itself, or maybe because I showed it to the Klonoa Discord server and some other servers, although I don't think it really had that much attention to the other servers, but that's besides the point. I am overall just impressed that it did so well. And I couldn't be any more thankful about that because as a series, Klonoa is honestly a very overlooked series that I feel like deserves a lot more attention and credibility. And I'm also glad to say that we're finally getting a remake, guys. I know, kind of old news since this was like a couple of months ago during the last Nintendo Direct, but it's still amazing to know that we're getting something new for the series. Okay, technically new, it's technically remakes of two previous games, but that's still amazing to me. And also the fact that they are full on remakes, which is also pretty amazing for me now that a new audience could experience these wonderful games in new hardware. That's what I always wanted. And I hope this builds up to like a new main series Klonoa game. Maybe Klonoa 3, maybe? But that's besides the point. I was actually thinking about doing a Klonoa Iceberg follow-up video, regardless if that happened or not. And I feel like it is the best time to do this. No, this video won't be as long, no, not nearly as long as the Iceberg video. But I highly recommend checking out the Iceberg video first before seeing this video since I'm gonna address some things that were in that Iceberg video and some other extra stuff alongside with it. Now, let's not beat around the bush. Let's talk about some corrections and mistakes I done in that Iceberg video some entries that I feel like I could have elaborated a little bit more on, and some new entries that I either forgot or did not knew about before I made that Iceberg video. Because oh boy, there were some entries that I regretted not knowing or just straight up forgot that I should have put in the last Iceberg video. Sometimes it can't be helped, but at other times I'm like, damn, why did I forgot about that? which we'll get to as the last part of this video. The first mistake I want to address, although I guess you could say it isn't exactly a mistake, it's more of a misinterpretation of anything, which I guess you could count as a mistake, I don't know. And that is Klonoa hating carrots, which looking back, I don't think Klonoa necessarily hates carrots. Just more disappointed about the meal not being bigger or satisfying enough. Because when you look at the cutscene itself, it doesn't really seem like he was disgusted by carrots or having a carrot on his plate. He was more underwhelmed if anything. And also the fact that we never really had anything previously or afterwards that really cements whether he hates or loves carrots necessarily. Really, it's just this isolated incident, if anything. So, we could probably be reading too much into one little scene. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Just something I wanted to address. Next mistake I want to address is the Dula Do B. Yeah, I know, weird name. Entry of the Iceberg where I described it as a bootleg Klonoa game, even though it would have been more accurate to say it's a Mario Galaxy bootleg game, just with Klonoa sound effects. Now I don't think anyone really commented about this, but it's something I actually want to address since Yalamid was kind of killing me when I saw it again and I'm like, what are you talking about? This is clearly a Mario Galaxy bootleg game that just happens to have Klonoa's sound effects, so 
that's pretty much it when it came to that mistake. Moving on. And the last mistake I want to point out, and this one's a big one to me even though nobody has ever mentioned it to me, but it was something that drove me crazy, and that is the Gaudius backstory section. Oh god, what was I thinking? Because I was essentially reading off false information at that entry. To the point that I kind of wanted to remedy it by making that What is Klonoa canon parody talking about Gaudius. Yes, that was my main motivation for that video. Because I really wanted to do Gaudius' character justice and... Nope, that entry did not do him justice, I will say that. So, if you want to see a more accurate depiction of Gaudius' backstory, Go see that video. Like, mistakes were made. I don't know why I was reading off a wiki page when it came to Gaudius' backstory. That was an, em an embarrassing mistake from my front, I'll say that. Oh right, I got one more mistake to point out, unless you guys could point out any more mistakes in that iceberg video. And this is one that a lot of people pointed out in the comments. And this is the fact that we actually got a new Klonoa game. Now in the beginning of the Iceberg video, I stated that we probably won't get a new Klonoa game anytime soon. Which, yeah, hindsight. And you know what? I am so glad I was wrong in that. So glad that I was wrong. I cannot wait for those remakes. God, it feels good to be a Klonoa fan now. Now let's move on to the more deeper dives into some of those entries in that iceberg. Some things I could have elaborated on or some extra details that I wanted to talk about in some of those entries. And one entry that I had in mind when it comes to this subject is the Door to Phantom Isle Rejected Rivals entry. Now I feel like I already did a decent enough job explaining most of the things I had the knowledge of when it comes to this Rejected Rival. But, one little thing that I sorta of realized over time is that this rejected rival also has some strong resemblance to Leorina. Now, not really in terms of appearance, but just the fact that they're both Sky Pirates and we're going to be rivals to Klonoa throughout the journey, I feel like, in a way, Lunatia's Veil was sort of taking rejected ideas from Door to Ventimile. For example, they wanted to give Gaudius more backstory and lore in Door to Ventimile, but they couldn't fit all that stuff in a fast-paced action game. So I feel like when they were making Lunatis Veil, they wanted to give that a try with that game's main antagonist. Well, not really main, more like final boss, I guess I could say more accurately. And... Honestly, I could really see it, because I see a lot of things mirroring each other. And that could kind of explain why Lunatia's Veal kind of have similar beats to Dorta Phantomile, and even have the final stage resemble the Cress a lot. And especially when it comes to the fact that Gaudius and the King of Sorrow essentially have these feelings of rejection to those who sealed them away. Except, like I pointed out in the Iceberg video, the King of Sorrow had a more happier ending than Gaudius, though maybe that is also somewhat intentional, in a way. But who knows, I probably might be reading too much into this. Maybe not. It was just something that I sort of noticed and was thinking was super interesting. And with that out of the way, let's get into the new... Entries. This one is most likely a joke from Akinari Kaniko. Sorry if I mispronounce your name, but yes, this was stated in one of the interviews, and I got so many questions. I'm not sure if this is like a Banjo 3 situation where it's a joke, most likely a joke, or maybe 
this was an actual thing, though I highly doubt that. But... I still find it somewhat interesting, nevertheless. During the development of Klonoa Heroes, they held this contest of this fan-made boss battle that they would put in Klonoa Heroes, and the end result was this boss battle, which does look like it was, well, made by a kid, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing whatsoever. I do think there is a charm to this boss battle being so simplistic looking, yet trying so hard to look menacing. Yeah, it does seem like something that a kid would make, and I think that's pretty awesome that Namco did this in the first place. Now, I don't know if more companies should do this more often, probably not, but I do think it was pretty cool. and. They were trying to have engagement with their fans, and you know, it's stuff like that that I wish to see more of. I think that's pretty badass, not going to lie. So yeah, I'm really proud of the kid that is the winner of this contest. I don't know where he is now, but hey man, it's pretty awesome that you have your own boss battle in an official Klonoa game. Mu Attack is an official Flash game created to promote the Klonoa Wii Remake that was coming out at the time. Now I don't really have much to say here, it's essentially a shoot'em up with a Klonoa twist. Klonoa 2 Dreamcatcher is an other official Flash game that Namco made to promote Klonoa 2 Dream Champ Tournament for the Game Boy Advance. In terms of the game itself, I even have less to say about this in comparison to the other one. It's essentially just a catcher game. However, one interesting tidbit is that you could win a prize if you have a good enough score. Though I'm not entirely sure what that prize is, so if anyone could fill me in with that, please tell me. Hideo Yoshizawa, director of Door to Phantomile, did actually wrote a fanfic which was essentially a retelling of Door to Phantom as a story if he had more creative control, or at least that's how it feels. And I say this because it does feel like this fanfic does have more lore bits that essentially fill the gaps in Door to Phantom as a story, however there are also some major differences like the fact that Joka is absent throughout the whole story and the fact that Klonoa is also split into three characters. I did talk about this a little bit more on the Gaudius lore video that I did not too long ago. I was supposed to talk about this in the Gaudius lore video previously, but I completely forgot to, and that was the fact that the triangles under some of the enemies' eyes in Dorta Fentimile actually indicates that Gaudius is actually controlling or possessing them. Honestly, it's kind of a little detail I don't think most people would notice, but I think it's pretty cool that they did. In the beginning of Empire of Dreams, Lolo and Polka makes a cameo. Now this... revelation that I made not too long ago... sort of... makes the continuity of these games even more muddy. This has to mean that these games take place after Luna TSV, right? I know in the previous Iceberg video, I'd assume they take place before George of Phantomel, thanks to the inclusion of Hupo. But yeah, this makes it even more confusing. And not to even mention the fact that in the beginning of Dream Champ Tournament, it is pretty much alluded that it is a direct sequel from Empire of Dreams but Hupo is nowhere to be seen, and Klonoa never mentions or even questions it, so... What's even going on with this continuity? In the credits of Klonoa Door to Phantomile, there is actually some Phantomillion text that can be seen, though the text here actually gives you a hint on how to unlock some things within the game. 
Now I'll admit, this is actually kind of funny, if not a little clever. Maybe it might be off-putting for some people, but I actually do think this is kind of cool. If not a little cryptic. Kind of. In Vision 3.1, in the Klonoa remake, for the Wii, there is actually some hidden textures that could be found around the house in this area. I'm not entirely sure what they really mean, but I think it's kind of a odd little detail that they included anyways. These last bit of entries are pretty much revealed in this one in-character Klonoa interview, I guess you could call it. And to get this started, apparently Klonoa's grandpa has actually got to come back to life in the end of the game. I'm not sure if this was an effect of the Song of the Rebirth, or if this was a scrapped idea. I don't know. But I do think it's kind of a bizarre idea. Apparently Naha Tube was going to have this section where Klonoa and Hupo are in a flying pot to chase with Naha Tube. I'm not sure if this was going to be like during the fight or before the fight. I don't know. Kind of a weird tidbit. Maybe it was going to be an extra phase. I don't know. Uh, apparently Pamela was going to have a flight stage, which I could think of two areas where this could be possible. Either after the boss fight against the possessed King of Jogpunk and Pamela, or after the boss fight against Joka when they were going to the Cress. I don't know. Just my little theory on how that would have worked, but really, we kind of know nothing about this idea except that it was scrapped. Apparently the Baldium boss fight was actually going to have a second phase, and apparently this was sort of discovered in the game's files as well, and the developer actually kind of talked about how this second phase would have looked like, which would have been based on a Klonde animal. I hope I'm prompting that one right. And we actually do see some concept art on that, which I think is pretty cool, but that's essentially all we know about this second phase. Now I don't really know much about this entry, but apparently Baloo had a comic that was done by another developer, though I'm not really sure what the contents of this comic would be, though it does have this piece of artwork, so... There's that. If you got more information about this comic, please let me know in the comments. Apparently in Door to Phantom Isle, Klonoa was actually going to have a female companion. Or as he said, girlfriend. Which I'm sure this is what this piece of concept art is. And I do think that this idea transformed into Lolo in Lunatia's Veil which also supports more of the idea that they took scrapped ideas from Door to Phantom Isle and inserted them in Lunatia's Veil. Now I've saved this entry for last, and that is the fact that Hupo's last line, at least according to Yoshizawa, is that someday I'll be your Phantom Isle. Now this one's a bit of a weird one, because I'm not entirely sure why they removed this line. Maybe they felt like it was too cryptic, maybe it was out of character, but all we know is, this was gonna be Hupo's last line in the ending of Door to Phantom Isle. Though I have this theory, although it might be a stretch, that is the fact that maybe this was foreshadowing Klonoa 2 Lunatia's Veil. I say this because the wording of, I will be your Phantom Isle, I think was supposed to allude to how Phantom Isle and Lunatia are sort of one and the same, or at least Lunatia being a reflection of Phantom Isle, just made with Klonoa's memories. Because each stage in both games kind of share similar themes, and the last stage, the Kingdom of Sorrow, is essentially a reflection of the Kingdom of Cress, which Hupo lived in 
and the Kingdom of Sorrow is also named Hupona, which sounds similar to Hupo. And we also know the, for the fact that the King of Sorrow is supposed to be an alter ego of Klonoa, or at least according to the writer of the game. However, the reason why I think this is such a stretch is because I'm not sure they planned that ahead. Keep in mind, a lot of the ideas on Lunatia's Veal are probably a lot of scrapped ideas from Dorta Phantomile. So, I don't know, I don't really see them planning a sequel while they were developing Dorta Phantomile. In fact, as far as we know, Dorta Phantomile was probably just gonna be a one and done game with maybe some spin offs here and there, but no main entry afterwards. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe they were planning for this to be a huge franchise, which I guess was most likely the case, because I guess they wanted Klonoa to be like the new Pac-Man of the time. And when I say that, I mean the fact that they wanted Klonoa to be the new mascot for Namco. But... I just don't see them planning Lunatia's Veil while they were developing Door to Phantomel, because keep in mind, this was a scrapped line, which means this was probably early in development, which I don't really see them developing a sequel while they're already early in development on this installment already. I don't know. But I think it's a pretty interesting theory nonetheless. Now I'm not sure if this has anything to do with this subject, but I thought it was pretty interesting anyways. And that's the fact that in Lunatia's Veil, the last scrapbook image that you unlock is this image right here with all the characters, but there is a message in the bottom that says, Thank you for your Lunatia. Now, I don't know if this has anything to do with that quote, highly doubt it, but I thought it was interesting to point out. However, Moonlight Museum and Klonoa Heroes does this same thing too, with having the last message saying thank you for your moonlight and thank you for your heroism. I'm not necessarily sure if this really means anything either. Again, probably doubt it even more. Probably just a traditional thing that the developers wanted to do for each installment, even though the rest of the GBA games don't do this, so... Yeah. And that's everything I wanted to talk about here. I really thank all of you for watching this video and even watching the previous Iceberg video if you have. Because I'll admit, that was my biggest project at the time, still is to this day honestly. And I do not regret doing it whatsoever. In my opinion, I think it's one of my best videos in this channel. And I'm also really glad that we're getting something new for this franchise. Even if it's just remakes of two of the main series games, that's good enough for me. And hell, this could build up to a third installment. But again, we'll just have to wait and see and hope that this game is successful. Which is why I want to propose a hashtag. Hashtag make Klonoa successful. Now I don't normally do hashtags unless they're like for a joke or a gag or whatever. But this time, I actually want to see if this could take off. I honestly want to see if this could work. Because I genuinely really want this game to succeed. Now, you don't really have to do this. It's an option, obviously. I'm not gonna force anyone to do this, nor I'm gonna force anyone to buy the game. I just think it would be cool if we could make Klonoa successful. Because I really love this franchise, I really want it to succeed, and I do want to see this series have a bright future. So that's the reason why I want to make this hashtag. For the sake of the future of this franchise, and hell, when the game releases, you could probably screenshot your game, whether it's in a copy or digital or whatever, and have this hashtag with it. That would be awesome. Like, I have my Twitter in the description, so let's hope for the best, guys. This is Metalux X Beats, 
Let's make Klonoa success.